Welcome back to part two. This is the uh, 2003 car trailer that we're working on. And on the video one, I was ready to do some repairs and I kept changing my mind. And so I basically talked myself into what I was going to do. So what we're going to do is take these fenders off. We're going to start stripping this trailer down. We're going to take the license plate off, the fenders off. These have bolts in them, and then they flip up and pivot off. We're going to cut off these taillights that are all rotted. The boxes are rotted. Um, the wiring underneath the back here is pretty rough shape. We're going to rip that out. we got a thunderstorm next town over. we got bright sun right now. And uh, we got ramps that slide under here, so I can't do recessed LED lights here. That takes up that whole space. It's a shame. I've got new uh, light boxes. I want to put on I've got new wiring I got new uh, plug a new breakaway that came with it I probably don't need because there's one that works good this one got really abused um, I already sprayed all the lug nuts and I sprayed the bolts I probably assembled them a few years ago with NICs hopefully they'll come off um, this uh, battery little battery breakaway batteries good um, it works the jack this got bent up it had, was in a little accident on the job here comes the tiger um, safety chains look like it could use a little clip on them other than that they work we're probably going to replace that jack I want to put a junction box so I can access the wiring I want to clean the front and paint clean the sides a little and paint and then I want to flip it over and put a new wiring harness under it and paint the bottom frame because we're in New York and this thing has seen some rust. We got salt up here. And uh, we got some damage on the back end here from hitting the ground. It bottoms every driveway I head out. Right, Tiger? We got squirrel too. They're both out here goofing around. So probably not going to talk much on video number two. I just want to get working. I'll set the camera up. I might do some time lapse. Some of the disassembly here might be boring. I'll probably end up cutting cutting this whole assembly off and switching this bar and hook it into the trailer. We're going to put more tie downs on it. Um, we're going to do a lot of upgrades. Those recessed clearance lights here, these aren't LED, but they work. I might just leave them for now and then maybe upgrade later. Um, but we want to make this trailer job ready and we got a job coming up where I got to take the tractor The wood splitter the three-point wood splitter. We got to take the three-point brush chipper Chainsaws we probably got to take the lift. We got to take a bunch of things with us The lift of course is a tow behind um, But I need this trailer to Work better. I've had problems recently where every time I hook up to it a lights not working or something's not working and it's getting annoying and so, right now it's on jack stands. I'm going to jack it up, take it back down. I'm going to flip the trailer on its side or all the way over so I can do this work quicker and easier. Upside down would be great because then I could feed my wires easier. Um, I think I'm going to drill holes probably. I may have to and then run it through grommets. And uh, so stay tuned. Well, the camera got so hot I couldn't touch it and I wouldn't record. I had to put it in the freezer. It's hot out. You can hear the thunderstorm towering over. Don't look like we're going to get any of the water. Hear the robin over there? A lot of robins here. Um, you saw me swivel the fender up out of the way. So I like this design. This is a classic car trailer. And um, it's got this strap you undo. And then you lift it right up, and it's got a uh, pivot up there. You slide it off the pin. All done. It's got three metal holders that it hooks down into. These are getting a little bit rough, and this is kind of close to the tire. So I'll probably be cutting these off. And they came up, and they just bend. They should have came out about an eighth or a quarter inch and went straight up so the fender could lock on it. I could do better than that and um, I took a cable towed it over here in the yard but I 
put a cable on it around the uh, leaf spring so make sure it wouldn't unhook and then last it into the uh, bucket up there. Let's see if we can tip this either up on its side or all the way upside down. I moved it over far enough that if I did flop it over, it'd be in the lawn and not bang bang on the driveway. Either way, when it's flipped over, it should touch the tires. So I don't think we'll do much damage to it by trying this. And if it unhooked, it would roll away from us, but I don't think it will. And I'll probably take and get stuff out of the way here, just in case. And then just see what happens if I can back up and flop this over. See if the tractor's got power enough. See if I'm too close to it. I don't know. see what happens. I got the license plate touching the tire. I hope that doesn't harm anything there. And hopefully it doesn't unhook and take off down over the hill. Didn't work as good as I wanted it to, but it bent that license plate bracket, which is not a big deal, I guess. But now that we can see good, we've got a 3 8 inch cable hooked around a leaf spring with two heavy hooks on the bucket, so I don't feel it can disconnect. So now we can see how many frame rails are under here, and it's got one about every 16 inches there on the beaver it does have grommet holes down this side for wiring there's our brake wiring and we got is this a splice we'll have to take that apart and look I don't see any holes in the frame 
surface rust and that's what I want to paint I want to get this looking a little better um, I bought all new backing plate with brakes a couple years ago and then I don't know if it was last year or year before I put all new springs on and it used to have a three spring I put a four spring so this is probably more more than a uh, 5,000 or 7,000 pound trailer now but um, I don't see any other harm to here it looks like I can paint everything with a spray I'll have to use a little ladder if I brush it on it'll take forever brushing it it's a lot of pockets here we have light wiring running up this side it's got little clips on it they're usually okay if they're out of the way these wires look pretty good so it looks like the wires are a lot better than I thought they were and when you look at your springs and you see where it attaches this is where you got to be concerned if there's any rust jacking anything going on to where you know it's weak and these look pretty good there is a greasable fitting in there I'm gonna work on that probably at the end because I can get it from the outside but um, this is where our ramps go in and this is where it got hammered on the ground pretty good see that right up through here here there I repaired the wires got some heat shrink on it so they're not as bad as I thought I thought they were tore right up here in their lights um, and then you see these work good and what else I like is a washer welded on it keeps your wires up but, but down down here it was clipped right to the bottom and the wire was out enough that it caught and ripped it so all right we're gonna cut these boxes off right here there's a tiger you come out to help me Ooh, that's a big one huh what's it doing upside down and then uh, we'll cut them boxes off put the new ones on the ramp slide in here and I believe they fit okay now but we do have some scale in here it needs cleaning out and then when I'm done because I'm over here in the grass I'll be running the magnet the rolling magnet pick up this but this is pretty thick here, but they should have had like a roller on the bottom. So you can see it caught, poop, poop, and, and it caught on something and ripped it outward. And this was our problem side, the wire's just hanging out there. So we gotta do something with this. And you see, right, these straps need replacing. They're paper thin to begin with. I'll probably be putting at least two new ones on there and then paint so this may not be too bad I'm gonna start somewhere who knows where there's quite a bit to do um, I think I should straighten out the back frame right there where it bottomed on the road maybe pop them lights out get some of that stuff out of the way um, get ready to grind and cut them uh, light boxes off without hurting the wiring if we're able to save it Otherwise, we'll rip that section out and replace it and um, work on the brackets for the uh, ramp supports. Um, I probably, you know, I probably could uh, change the location of the ramps and put them here. But I hate to get rid of the support because I really like it. There's no bends in the metal here. But because these ramps are here, I can't put the lights. Those suckers are right out there in the way. But these, on this side, aren't too bad. But these are shot up here. So I have to make new ones. And then, where that hooked on to the driveway, it really made a mess. So I'll see if I can straighten this out. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'll probably clip some wires and move some wires and look around we got a big storm coming here the leaves are dropping everything here and I can hear the booming happening it's getting pretty close 
The sky was super blue, and now we got some dark clouds. I'll be out here a few minutes, and I might have to quit. They were expecting a little bit of weather. Well, it'd be nice if I had some heat. I got all the den out all the way down through here. Got this round again. Got this one almost round, but I can't get this big. That hooked on something, like on the edge of the road, and it really did a number on it. And then here, if I have to, I'll make a cut in this and then fold it over and then weld it. But otherwise, I'm gonna need a big torch to heat that. I think it's stretched too far. And I got to get this dimple out. But I think if I get rid of this, I can straighten that. This one down here is pretty good. And then I got to work on the two ramp areas yet. But we got a storm brewing here. You don't want to be under some of these big trees when they get swaying like this. I think I'll let the flags down. Okay, good morning. We had that storm roll through and we got some much needed rain. We got some branches down. There was power lines, three power lines down in the downtown, uh, trees down. It was kind of a mess. We didn't get much up here. Um, we got a lot of rain. We needed it. What we're going to work on today is Dawson come out to give me a hand, which I'm excited to get some more help to get this moving. Um, I want to test the ramps in there. And this ramp has been together unused for how long, Dawson? You don't even remember using it, do you? So it's been a long time, but I want to take and this is bent right here, so let's try to slip it in this upper one. I want to make sure it fits. And I gotta remember if these are tight in there. Is it too heavy? It might be too heavy for you, but don't let it hit you in the head. I just want to see where it's hitting, if it hits. You got a hold of it good? Okay. All right, let her down a little. Down, there you go. Now see, it gets tight there, and I don't know why. And probably got to get a larger ladder out here. Could be just rust jacking, I don't know. But it's tight right here. And... You can't push it in anymore, right? Not without forcing it. Okay, wait, we don't want to jam it in there. So it goes in this far and gets tight. And I don't see anything wrong here. But I'm sure there's... I think it's like rush jacking. It's a, like an angle iron that's welded here. And it swells up. And so... It would be nice if those ramps were slightly narrower. And the main ramp that I use, let's take this back out. We'll show them what we got here. Watch your eyes. Got a little rust in there. And then these are finger pinchers because this bar will swing down. Push up there. Watch your eyeballs. Because this is a two piece ramp. So let's set it down the inside ramp is obviously smaller and the inside ramp I believe is the one that I I need for sure every time so what I want to do is if he can hold that is try to separate these because they're stuck I have to pry or something there can you uh this is where they pinch your fingers. So if you grab, say, this one, and then watch your leg, and uh, this outside one, let's see here. Got to figure out which way we're going with this, but see if you can tug on. Let's see. Actually, you're tugging on the inside one, right? Yeah. Um, I want to get these apart, and if we can get this hook is what we need, and it's got a swing lock. So once it sits over that bar, it's on, 
This trailer is so low to the ground, that I've never used the double length ramp. There's no need for it. Um, so I might leave the large section at home. The small section will probably fit right in there. Let's test that out. Let me go get a pry bar. So we're going to pull this apart. I got a pry bar here. And right, just a little jiggling is all we need, Dawson, I think. If you want to pull in that, you see it's got little bends in it. This is a 20 year old trailer and the ramp sat in there most of the time not being used so rust gets on them. Let me we're doing this backwards Dawson. You've got to push the small one to me. That's why. There we go. I'll pull that big one toward you. Pull the big one toward you. Then we get this apart. Alright. Let me tap that to you. That's gotta be tapped on. You ready? Yeah. Am I hitting the right one? Yeah. yeah, you're right, it does. Oh, we got New York rust, you know. But I'm thinking if I don't need it, let's not take both sets of ramps with us, just keep the small one on the trailer. More like Let's try to go down. This thing over top oh, let me show you guys what this is. All right, it makes sense now. That's why they're finger pinchers. Is this is an interlock so that they don't come apart? Is this a slide? It'll catch and it's got this lip, so it's not designed to come apart. It's just designed to, uh, you know, stretch out an extra about two feet, right? So it's a total length of around five feet, and. Uh, now we gotta decide if we wanna finish taking it apart. The other ramp is already apart. I don't know why, but it fell apart. We're gonna see about fixing this. Over there hammering away on it, working up a sweat. We got two kitties here, chilling right out. They know what to do. Squirrel went in for some munchies. So, we pulled it back out, lifted this up. That's our lock. Now these should pull apart. There, keep going. Okay, now, Look at that ramp, and what we got is that has the interlock on it, and that. Now flip that over, and see that has the sandpaper tread, a little rough shape, but it works. We don't need that, that's just the extension. Let's get that one out of the way. Alright, now this is uh, the one we need, and there's a, uh, this is where it hooks over this metal bar. This is a lock, so it's... It's automatic, it just locks it on. Down there, there's a pull handle. Let's flip this over. There's sandpaper on this too. So now, watch Dawson. We're gonna swivel this around, hook it on the trailer, just to figure out what we're gonna do here. Hook that right on there, watch your fingers. And then bring that down, like to the ground. You see that? You can't lift this up. With that lock in there we're, we're on the side but the weight of that will pivot that up to, like that to keep that from uh, coming off in there and then that'll slide anywhere we want it for lawnmowers or what and then the distance from here to the ground is is over three feet so i think all we need is this one so try put this in the track and we'll put it in this bet track here this one we got to fix it. Put it in here. And see, if it should fit all the way by itself now. A little farther. You go any farther? Oh, yeah. And then we've got a little... This used to have a hinge door on it. And a little, you could put a padlock. And this hinged out, but it was all rusted and it broke on the well. And I got rid of them. And I cut out a aluminum piece to fit right up through here, and I put a little clip in it. I don't think anybody wants these ramps because they won't fit anything else. And then uh, let's pull that out and see if it fits up here. And what that's going to tell me is if my straps and everything are good on the trailer, I don't have to deal with it too much, you know. We'll try it up here on top. Don't get your fingers pinched.
That's a cure, isn't it? Just not use the extensions. Need the extensions. And then if we need the extensions, like if I get a low car that I want to tow on a trailer, which I haven't towed a car in a long time. Um, I use this for work, you know. Um, the tractor, I can dry the tractor on without ramps using the bucket. But we could use it. The reason, most of the reason I didn't use the ramps is because they were rusted in here and they wouldn't work. I couldn't even get them pulled out of here. And now we know why. It's really called rust jacking. And it's because they put two pieces of metal together and it corrodes between them and it swells out. They should have had a little bit more tolerance in there. But going down the road, I'm sure you can hear this. So you hear them rattling. But uh, I probably could put a little rubber on the bottom of it. So anyways, I want to fix these two straps. So I'll get a couple two inch or whatever by a foot, weld them on. And then uh, we got to do a little work on this edge yet. And I think we're going to cut this out. We're going to cut the lights off, cut the bar off. And uh, we looked at the wire harness. We don't have to replace the whole wire harness. There's not a lot wrong with it. Okay, come over here a second and hold these wires while you cut there. Yeah, I'm going to do as much as I can with a sawzall. <laughs> and if this is sticking out that far, one cut means they probably overlap, right? So I probably want to take a little V out of it, right? Um, So that's way too big right now. Right. Got him. Now we can get this. Let me try. All right, then uh, watch out. Just a little bit on that. Probably hit this in first. We're using a Diablo blade, and that thing cuts nice. And Dawson's using that second hammer. And I did one hammer last night, and I got all the way down and all the way up. And we're right here pretty close now. There's Tiger. What's he chasing a moth? What you doing? He's probably saying, quiet down. It's sensitive. I got sensitive ears. He's funny, ain't he? Yeah. That's We're funny. lovable kitty cats, huh? But yeah, I want to get this nice and straight so it looks like it was never happening. And then I might put a quarter inch channel protector here in the middle, all the way down or part way, maybe the middle section, just so when it hits the road, because it's going to hit again, it don't catch its lip. They should have had like a bend up, you know, like a U, but then it would hold more salt probably. All right, watch your ears, Tiger. We're going to hammer some more. Look how nice 
set band already. If you want to just keep moving, I'll keep hitting. Side. If you want to come out on this side, the den in it. How's it doing? Good. A little bit. Let me hit it without you on it. Maybe you could hold that over there a little bit. I need a bigger hammer, I think. This has a better shoulder. I won't hit this. Just keep your arm out of the way in case I miss. Yeah, it's still there. I think the way I use a small hammer. Sometimes applying heat on that will help. Alright, you guys are getting a headache, so I'll put on time lapse so that you don't break your eardrums. Let's see, these are pretty heavy boxes. That's full eighth inch stuff. This is our, this is our um, ramp bar. That's three quarter inch solid. Them Diablo blades cut that off nice, but for as heavy as that is, feel how heavy that is, Dawson. I can't believe it rusted out, you know? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Um, so what we're doing, is we came up with that number of an inch and a half. And so we started to cut it, but because I previously got almost all the way through, and I thought, well, I better cut this first, is we were gonna take an inch and a half out so we can weld it right back on there. So we'll probably set that in a vise or vise grips and finish cutting that, and then we'll weld that back on there. And we're gonna hook the solid trailer still. We cut it flush with the end of the trailer. There's a weld right here, so I stayed right on the edge of that weld. And, um, now our new lights can slide either into that pocket, I can notch this out, or we can mount them out here, either or. And, um, but it's important to me to get this ramp set up, because that system works awesome. So that's all we're going to do, we're going to keep going. This has got the tape measure, he's going to measure for our bands up there, see what, what length we need. No, no, 13, no. That's going to be sticking out be a sharp edge. I'd say even if you did it somewhere between 12. 11 and 12, they both the same. Yeah. If I tap them up, guys, what? This is bent down a little bit. 
it's some rust jacking going on. I'll show you what the rust jacking for the guys that don't know is when they put two pieces of steel together, you get a lot of, I don't know if you call it electrolysis, but look at all this loose stuff here. And if you're looking from the end, see all that bubbling and it lifts right up? It, um, it lifts the metal away and it curved it down. Well, the good in our case is it's going to allow the water and salt to run off. So I'm going to leave them alone. I don't care if it's flat because it's going to make our ramp enclosure a little tighter. And we already had a problem with it tight. So Dawson's going to mark out two bands that are about 12 inches long. We're going to cut them with that Sawzall because we're having really good luck. And where do you want to cut them? Up here on this little table? Yeah. All right. All right, I'm pretty happy. I cut slots, top and bottom, which is left and right, and we're ready to put our um, our ramp bar on. So we'll weld them on. We're way out here in the yard, so we can't use the arc welder. The cord's not long enough. So we'll use the uh, Lincoln MIG welder, and uh, that should work fine for this stuff. Probably have to do a little bit of grinding, but we'll get welding on that and see how these work. I turn the heat up a little bit for him so you get better penetration on it. We got it on temperature B. So he tacked it off and then he ground it off and then we V'd it out better because we couldn't hold it steady. Once he gets a good penetration on that, he'll hit it again uh, with a grinder, clean it up, and then we'll press it against the trailer and weld it against the trailer and that'll be pretty rugged. All right, we uh, welded that on there. That should be good. That's about two and a half, well, that's about three inches. And then this side here, three inches. Is it perfect? No. Is it as good as Dawson's? Hmm, maybe. But this light's on, not gonna fall off. Now we're gonna move up and do the other one. We're gonna have Dawson put them straps on. He wants to do more welding. So I got this box in, welded right up this side, welded up this side. Here's where, here's where it joins in and welds on. So our ramp's all set. Our recessed light's gonna fit right in there. That's gonna work out nice. Now, the wires connects it there, but I think I'm gonna make a hole in the bottom so in case there's water in there, it can drain out the bottom. Hi, buddy. Got the squirrel helping us. So Dawson's spotting that. He's gonna weld them on while I'm doing a grommet. I got a three quarter inch grommet. I'm gonna put my wire loom out coming out the bottom of that. That way, if any water gets in there, it'll drain out that grommet. 
going to drill a three quarter inch hole. Dawson ran us out of wire, so we're going to put some wire in our Lincoln. All right, hand our gun over here. Now, you see that? Pull that wire right out. It's going to hit you in the eye, so get your hand ready. Dangerous stuff, ends of wires. I like to blind you. I like him put his glasses on when we do stuff. All right, take that right over and get rid of it. Dispose of it. Bend the ends a little bit so it can't get us in the eye. We got, this looks like a Harbor Freight. 30 thousandths Vulcan mild steel flux core. Good bead appearance, easy slag removal, fast freezing. All right, the trick with these is open them carefully. Take that spool off. Set your parts right next to you. Where's the parts? All right, then loosen this up. Start off loosening this up. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah, remember, like that. And then, I want him to bring me a knife, now it damages. But you want tension on this, so it don't whack any eyeball. And you make a mess in the machine. And they welded it right through there, so that's pretty good for that. Now we need a set of cutters. We're going to need some side cutters. Be in that bucket right there. And we're going to clip our wire so it's got a nice square edge on it. See, they melded it right in there. So we want to get all this out of the way so when it unwinds, it doesn't catch on that. I want to ask Dawson to help me. We're not going to use any tape. And we're going to go ahead and put this on. And try not to get this all goobered up. You got stickers on everything, you know. Alright, now this was where? Mm -hmm. That locked right there? Mm -hmm. On that and then, uh, a little bit different than my other welder. Hold your hand on that wire right there. Don't cover it up here. i got to work over here. Switch hands. There you go. We're going to clip this. I want to get this out of our way. It's probably a good way they did it, but it's always going to be in your way. We're going to run a magnet through here. We already got it out here. And uh, he's going to hang on to that. All right, follow me and hold pressure. Let up. Let go down. Keep going. I'll show him what a disaster it can be. Grab a hold of the spool. Now hold the wire up under here so it can't unroll. Got it? Crawl across. Now, the end of these are, you want them square like that. And then, we're going to bring it this way. And mount it on. Keep holding that tight there. Put your fingers there. Because I've had this unwind on me before. And it's a bummer. You're on there. Don't turn it, just push it down. Get your lock on. Where's the lock? Tighten it right down. Do it so it don't turn at all. There, right, easy. Let me see it. It won't turn, right? Good. Now. Loosen it just a little so I can pull. And put your fingers across the wire. I usually use tape or something, but then it gets sticky. Unloosen so I can pull it. And 
got to have it loose as a hair. All right, I'm going to clip it straight again. You got it? You got the wire? Yep. And then we're going to bring it through the spool wire here, through the cable end. Let it roll a little. Right now we got it unplugged. Let it roll. So you're making me bend it. Let it roll. Okay, hold tension on the wire though. On the wire against the spool. Now when we get over here, is the tricky part. We gotta feed it up into that little feeder. Some of these take time or tweezers. Because it's pretty tight in here. You get it right inside that. Pull it back a little. All right, forward there. Now go forward. Hold tension on her. Keep that wire tight. It's important. Don't don't go so fast. Hey, look at you're kinking it. Don't do that. I gotta feed. Let it roll a little. All right. Now I got it in the machine. We'll take our roller, flop her back, bring this up. We're on a number three right now. So lock this down. Now plug your machine in. We're going to see if we can get her to feed through here easy. We'll turn her on. See that pulling? Loosen it just a little. Hold your tension here. Multiple fingers if you have to. It's a lot better than a Chicago welder. The old Lincoln. And I want to get about an inch or so out of the gun here. You want a little bit of drag on your spool. Keep it nice and tight. Otherwise, when it gets raveled here, you're you got problems. You gotta get about six feet out. He's having a tougher time getting the arc to strike because it's all rusty up there. But we figured that. So just use a little more heat and Should be just about here now. I want to work on the other tail light while he's welding. I feel it in my hand here. There it is. So we're all set. We'll lock the door. Stand her up. You're in business. Cool. Weld away, Jose. We're going to run the magnet, make sure there's no junk on the lawn. And then if you want to keep these handy, if you get any more than an inch of wire out, just clip it off, you know. Well, we're back to it now. He's dying in shorts and crocs, isn't he, to weld. He's going in a circle. It looks good from a distance. Going to get a pretty good weld on there, and then that will hold our ramps up. While he's welded on them, he's filling up the weld. It'd been easier if we were closer to the garage using the arc welder and that thicker stuff. I'm going to do something here on the tongue. Um, the wire, we're going to replace this plug, and it comes with an 8-foot section. This is a 4-foot tongue, 
So I gotta figure out where I wanna put the junction box. I can cut it shorter and have it mounted here. I can do it underneath. I don't know if I wanna crawl underneath. So I don't ever wanna have to make this difficult. So right now it comes straight down through the coupler tongue and it's got some kind of something going on here for for the brake ground, uh, for the breakaway, yeah, for the breakaway. And it's a, you know, it's a brake lead. It looks like it's got a scotch lock on it with tape. It goes down through the frame. Got the Leatherman here. All this scale I want to get off the paint. That's what the powder coat, everybody says powder coat's great, but I think they put that powder coat on bare metal and you get rust underneath it. I, I prefer paint still. It goes through this frame, which is about a two by four anyway. Might be a five, I gotta measure. And it goes down and exits down there. I think I should bring it inside and run it along here and have the box here and go through the frame. I, I did a little hole there and I, the battery went dead again. And I didn't charge my batteries this time, so I'm borrowing some of Dawson. And what I want to do is finish drilling the hole. And I think the diameter of this, because it's got the sheathing over the cable, I'll probably want a three quarter inch hole in that. So I'm going to keep drilling here. All right, we're going to do a little heat shrink. we got one wire that needs repair. Here, you do this. I got this. Keep working around. It'll get too hot. No hurry on this. Let it shrink, you know. See that? Tighten up the ends just a little more. I'll keep the water out of the connection. It already had heat shrink on it, but it was like a tear in it. So we're just trying to fix it. He's going to wrap it around that and then up through the grommet we worked on. We got a grommet in the frame over here. So wiring is going to take a while. That's not the most important thing right now to me because we've got all the wires outside the frame now. So. I want to move on to painting the frame underneath so that we can be completed under here. And there are these little clips, and we can put the wires in the clips. And we'll probably use little short zip ties. And I'm going to have to get this secured a little better, you know, like that. And I, you know what I should do? I should have Dawson weld a couple washers on there so we can slide it on through. I put four, a series of four washers, we'll run our wires right up. Once they cool, I'll feed these through. And then uh, we're gonna get on to painting. We'll probably take something, like a wire brush, and knock off this high stuff. And then we'll go ahead and spray this black. So Doss is starting to do the uh, wire brush, knock off the high stuff, and that's all I care about. There's no rust holes in this stuff. It's pretty thick. and. Um, I don't want him to spend a lot of time, just get the loose stuff, or I'm going to go gather the paint materials and the gun so we can spray this.
Well, we got a big chunk of rust off that thing. This paint eater is a garage sale, like $10. Um, Wagner paint eater. This thing goes almost too fast. This had a thick pad on it. There's nothing left to it, but I got rust, a lot of surface rust down in a hurry, and Dawson's getting the edges. Probably should wear a dust mask, but the stuff goes flying like 90 miles an hour. You see, that's pretty smooth now. Good enough for me. We're gonna get an air hose and blow this off. But if you can see down in the grass, you see all that junk all the way across here. It does a good job. I wanna get all the loose stuff off so that we can get this painted. Dawson's using his leaf blower, shop blower, to clean out all the debris that fell in. I just slapped a weld on here. This is a spot on the frame that had a crack. Well, it didn't have a crack. I cut a crack to relieve some of the pressure, and that's as good as I'm going to leave it to weld on it. And uh, he's just getting all the debris out of here so we can get the paint going. I got this uh, Wagner Power Painter kit. It's new, unused, another uh, Craigslist or Facebook, spraying latex and oil-based paints, lifetime warranty on ceramic tips. It's got a small tip in there. I looked at it. It was brand new. It was cheap. I don't know what these run, probably 60 or 80 bucks. This holds about a quart, maybe, probably. What I'm going to do is I've got some open Rust-Oleum Professional Gloss Black. I'm going to thin it. I'm going to use about maybe a quarter, not quite. And this is Mineral Spirits. Cleans up and thins oil-based paints. I stirred this already. If my helper would hand me, Dawson hand me an old sock or something, I'd like to clean up the side of my container. There's our paint. We use an old sock so I can read the back of my container. And then stir that up good. A little windy out here to be spray painting so make sure your vehicles are moved we do have the tractor over there I'm not as concerned as I am the car or the truck I want to get this done today this actually looks like I thinned it too much but usually I do about 25 percent and then that's what we're going to use for this Something I purchased when it was $28 a gallon, now it's $65 a gallon. And then, it's black in the driveway, I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to put the top on my co coffee container thing here. I see the squirrels helping. He was napping in the chair. Now I got a paint strainer that I'll probably use so we don't get any kind of contaminants in there but this has a nice filter on the bottom so I don't know if I'm going to worry about that I, the container was clean that was clean clean enough for what we're doing we're not painting a car now maybe I'll grab one of them little funnels let's see how sloppy we could be here Black on the driveway, I don't care too much. We gotta seal it this year. Yeah, we're spillage. I really like that container that has the ounces on the side that I uh, used when I put Lucas in the truck. I'm gonna fill this up. I'm gonna assume that this sprayer will work. If it doesn't work, we're gonna use an HVLP 
a Harbor Freight, something to get the paint on this bottom of the trailer. Um, I'm not going to use a hardener, at least at first. I should, but I don't want to. That's 30 bucks a pint. We're going to let this make a mess right here. Take our sock, clean this up, and I'll see you over at the trailer. Finally got this thing working. And what I want to do is get it in the corners and in the seat. See that? Get it down in them seams. That's where it's important. We're outside, but we probably still should have a man. Alright, Dawson's painting the high spots with that little electric painter. It's working pretty good. It took a little bit to get a prime out of it, but if he keeps about 10, 12 inches, the spray pattern's pretty good on it. Try to keep it more upright because you're going to make it leak. And then uh, once he gets across the top, he can stand up and do the rest of it if he wants to do it. It's looking good. I don't know how... I'll show you up front while he's doing that. What a transformation, guys. Look at the difference. Man, that's still painting. Here's what it looked like before. And, uh, he's painting it black. He wants to get it done tonight so we can flip it over and start working on fenders and the loops and stuff on the other side. So he's spraying it on pretty thick. And it should look good. Well, there we go. It took maybe an hour. We put it on pretty heavy. Might be a couple runs somewhere, but who cares, right? Um, I tried to get in the seams so it'd run down behind it, you know. Helps keep with the rust jacking. But this looks a lot better. Nobody's ever going to see it again, probably. But I wanted to do the springs, check all that, look everything. So everything on the bottom is done. I had to put a mask on because it was kind of nasty. To, well, it, actually, I didn't really smell a lot because where I'm outside, but I know better. You got to put a mask on. I wanted to use a respirator. would have been better. That little electric painter, it worked. Very loud. Um, but that's what they are. I don't care. It went on good. Now that we can uh, drop it back on its wheels, what I want to do is... Uh, you work on the outsides with our tie downs, um, finish hooking up our wires, things like that we can do. We're not going to run. I think the only wire I'm going to run is for reverse light. And so we could probably just run it right through the looms that are under there. Probably some kind of toggle switch because I, I don't think my truck has a reverse in the uh, wiring harness. But we'll see. And then um, that's it. It turned out good. I bought two gallons of paint, three gallons of paint. I didn't open any of them. I used what I had. I had uh, Rust-Oleum Professional Black um, left over from, I think, the dump trailer a couple years ago. Stirred it up, thinned it, put it on. It worked. So I'm ahead on that game. So my $150 price might go down a little bit. Um, I'm hoping to stay in a... You know, a cheap budget like that. We'll see what happens. We got the mighty squirrel. He's down there hunting. And we got Tiger. He's pretty lazy. Doss and I are going to let this trailer over. And he feels that if I stay on the same side I'm on, it's safer letting it down. So he's going to grab the safety chains. And he's either going to go this way or he's going to go that way. And try to allow the trailer to keep straight as I tilt it back over. Wish us luck.
That was a success.